Hey laser folks! Average power measurement of a pulse laser can be a really tricky thing. The slower the repetition rate, the harder it is to get a stable measurement. So what is the minimum repetition rate to get stable and reliable measurements? Let's find out! Welcome back, Miriam here from JTEC EO, your partner for accuracy. As you may have already guessed, there is no specific numerical value to this question. However, there are some guidelines to follow based on the rise time of the power detector you are using and your subjective tolerance to noise and error. Let me give you a practical explanation. The first important thing to mention is that higher repetition rates will give you more stable and accurate measurements. With a very low repetition rate, the output signal has enough time to decrease significantly while the detector is waiting for the next pulse. You will then see a sinusoidal trend in the response of the detector. If we double the repetition rate, you can still see the same sinusoidal shape, but the frequency is doubled and the amplitude decreased considerably. At a very high repetition rate, the output signal does not have the time to drop between pulses. At this point, the detector will react as if it were seeing a continuous CW laser. The response will no longer be sinusoidal, but a flat line. The repetition rate where you reach this point is different from uh, for every detector. But a good rule of thumb that we use here at JTEC Hill is that your rise time should be long enough to contain five pulses. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you have a detector with a two seconds rise time. You need to have a repetition rate above 2.5 Hertz in order to have five pulses in a two seconds period. Therefore, 2.5 Hz is your minimal repetition rate. For a detector with a 1 second rise time, that is 5 Hz. For a 0.5 second rise time detector, this is 10 Hz, and so on. The faster the detector, the higher the minimum repetition rate. It is always possible to increase the stability of your measurements with some software functionalities. One quick way to smooth the measurements is to use a moving average in your measurement software or monitor. A moving average is a, of a few seconds helps increase the signal to noise ratio of your measurements. Another trick is to disassemble anticipation. Anticipation is used to increase the response time of a detector. Dissembling it will help reduce the fluctuations of the measurements. If you are measuring your laser with Miro altitude, you can change the moving average right here. And JTEC EO's XNR anticipation can be turned on and off with the toggle right here. That's it for this video. I hope it was useful. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more expert tips on how to achieve the most accurate laser beam measurements possible. See you next time. Bye-bye.